We're talking about, thank you, Wynn, for that opinion. Complex zeros. What's a complex number? Uh, uh, like I. Like I. So I that's, imaginary. it's got imaginary in it. You're exactly right. That is part of it. It's actually some, any number in the world, it's a real number plus or minus some imaginary number. So I need to talk about what an imaginary number is. Okay, what variable do we put in for it? I, and what does I represent? Good job, the square root of negative one. What, when, I know you were looking at Davis, I need you to look up here. What is I squared? Negative one. Remember that? Let me pause for this. Thing. I never like forgot that. Add five i squared. What does that become? How about negative two i squared? So all it does is change the sign of the number. Do we remember that? Okay. Also, if we have a complex number, Davis, give me a complex number. Negative 2i squared. <laughs> so, is that not 1? 2a. 2 minus i. Okay. 2 minus i. Thank you, Avery. Is a complex number. <laughs> it wasn't a trick question. That's okay. All right. 2 minus i. That's, what, that's a complex number. Do we all agree? We talked about the conjugate of a complex number last year. Do you remember what that is? No. Who remembers what that is? What is it? It's the same thing, but what? What's opposite? Which sign? The middle sign. Everything's the same except the middle sign. What happens when you multiply conjugates together? All right, what's, let's, let's see. What's the conjugate of 2 minus i? You're on it now, Davis. What happens when I multiply those two together? What cancels, Fallon? The i's go away. There's no more imaginary when you multiply conjugates. And so if you don't believe me, Coleman's right. The middles cancel. Negative i squared is the same thing as what? Negative four. Negative one. Wait, I thought you were multiplying it by four. Negative i squared is positive one. Because the I, I squared, there you go. Negative, negative. So negative, positive, yeah. Positive. So what does this simplify to? Four plus one. Do y'all not remember this? Because y'all okay. <laughs> yeah, I do remember. Okay, okay. That's some background for what we're gonna do today. We're, we're going to talk about two theorems. Yeah. The first theorem we talked about last year is the fundamental theorem want to say calculus because there's one of those two but this is the fundamental theorem of algebra do you remember what that says yes. what Ooh. 
The fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that the degree of the polynomial is equal to the number of solutions. But here's the thing. That number of solutions could include complex, imaginary, real, or repeated solutions. What do I mean by repeated solutions? Multiplicity. That's exactly right. Good job. Y'all are on this. So a quadratic has two solutions, a cubic has how many? Cortic has, and so on, right? The biggest exponent tells us the number of solutions. Everybody okay there? I'm going to give you the second theorem, and then we're going to walk, oh, right along with this, the number of solutions and the degree also tells us, this is kind of a corollary to the fundamental theorem of algebra, it also tells us the number of linear factors. Okay, that's when we write it as x plus 2, x minus 3, maybe this one squared, and so on and so forth. That tells me how many factors that I have. Which makes sense, because each factor represents a solution, right? Um, like, how many parentheses? How many zeros? Well, this is solutions are zeros. But each zero I could make a factor out of because x, which is the next. Three. One of them is just repeated. Right? Because if, if x equals k is a zero, then what's the factor? x. No. What? If k, if x equals k is a zero, yes, then x minus k is a linear factor. That's all this is saying. This is this same theorem. I'm just kind of breaking it down and explaining how we use it. Okay, but it's the same theorem over and over and over. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you. Y'all all okay so far? Okay, thank you. You're so tired. I'm waiting on you. It's okay. I'll wait. It doesn't equal zero, it is a zero, which means it's an x intercept. It's a solution. Got it? One, two. All right. Let's say, for example, This is my function. Do I? What is the degree? Two. How do you know that? There are two factors, or the x and the x multiplies the two, so the degree here is two. What are the solutions or the zeros? Mm -hmm. If I set each of those equal to zero and solve, I get 2i and negative 2i, right? It doesn't matter if it was x minus 3 and x plus 2, you, you're still doing the same thing. You're setting those equal to zero and solving. So here, it's 2i negative 2i. Tell me what that means about my quadratic. It's never crossing or touching the x-axis. Let's think about 
Let's foil it out first and let's put it in standard form. What's standard form mean? Squared plus B X plus B. Right? Because it's a quadratic. That was all of algebra two. That was quadratics. You do remember that. We factor from standard form. That's okay. We factor from standard form. We um find the vertex from standard form. We do everything from standard form. You completed the square to get it in vertex form from standard form. Yeah. Okay, some people do that. Okay, so multiply this out and let's see what happens whenever we put it in standard form. Hopefully. I have a meeting during my planning today. So foil this out or multiply this out. X times X is what, James? X squared. Plus, wait. Okay, but I'm going to do the X times 2I is what plus I? And then I'm going to do this middle term. They cancel out. They cancel out, but I'm just showing you. I'm boiling right now. Minus 4i. Okay, so let's talk about yes. These are exactly the same, but opposite signs, so they cancel. Yeah. So, no. Negative 4i squared is the same thing no, as. X squared minus 4i squared. Right, but what is negative 4i squared? Wait, that's correct. Wow. Wow. That's not nice, don't say that again. Wow. Where's the i go? Everybody else Where's the i go? Which i? The I, I like to have the reference for y'all. Clearly, you've never gone back and watched the recordings. I record every lesson. Okay. The middle, where did which I go in? This one? Because what is I squared? Okay. What's negative four times negative one? Positive four. So that's where it came from. So this is X squared. Plus four. Think with me for just a minute. Oh, hard. So, what are we doing? so we started with it in factored form. We're talking about the zeros being imaginary zeros instead of real zeros. And what happens? And we're gonna go a little bit deeper than that. So the directions actually for this would say. It would give you f of x equals x minus 2i, x plus 2i. And it says, write the polynomial function in standard form, which is x squared plus 4, and identify the zeros of the function and the intersect, inter intersect. intercepts of the graph, which are the same thing. So where it crosses the x-axis, which in this case, the intercepts or the, they have no intercepts, but the zeros are 2i and negative 2. Um, so I want to show you why, because if you think back, think about this parent graph, x squared. What has been done to get to x squared plus 4? Think about your transformations. Think of up 4. So if I... Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. Actually, I was like... All right. This is what this graph kind of looks like. So do you see why it has no real solutions? There are no x-intercepts because it never crosses the x-axis or touches it. That's right. There is no asymptote. No, there's no asymptote. There's a vertex, but there's no asymptote. Vertex is this minimum here. The minimum or the maximum of it. It's the point. 
the point where it stops increasing and starts decreasing or stops decreasing like and starts stopping. Yes, James. When you said for them to be an athlete, they have to be too long. Or it has to be like a reciprocal. You have to be too long. No, they just have to be like if the graph shows like that. Okay, so that that discontinuity. Yeah. Okay, an asymptote is a type of discontinuity if it's a vertical asymptote. But, but what when when is just thinking about the reciprocal function is what he's thinking. Okay, so he he's writing that it occurs that one time, but that's not the only time well, I know it occurs. What he's talking about. Right. I just know more than that. Okay. Do I need to do another one of those? Because they can get quite complicated. Oh, Davis, there's more. So the solution three has multiplicity two, which means what graphically? It bounces off in three. Good job. Multiplicity means it happens twice. That's what we just took a test on yesterday. That means it happens twice, right? What are the x-intercepts of this graph? Three, that's it, right? Three, and at three it bounces because it has multiplicity of two. This is an I, by the way. Is that the only x-intercept I have? Yes, the only real one. That's exactly right. In multiplicity. It says M-U-L-T, but it means multiplicity. It means multiplicity. Bless you. <laughs> How is that different than the zeros or solution? What are the solutions? Are the signs supposed to be like three? That's exactly right. I can have imaginary solutions. I cannot have imaginary x intercepts because I'm my. Oh, this is so easy. You can just set each one of these easy zeros. So if it says x intercept, it has to be real. Nope. Yes. So that is. These are real. That's exactly right. That's a good way to say it. This is all. Now, I'm not going to go through foiling this out because we are fixing to multiply till our fingers fall off no, on what we're fixing to do. Um, by the way, what's the, are you hot? What is the, what is the degree here? Four. Does that support? Does that support the fundamental theorem of algebra based on our equation? Yes, because there are four factors listed there, and there are, it, it is a degree four. All right, questions, comments, concerns before we do theorem number two, which is the hard theorem. Thank you. I'm trying to break them in for Disney World. Yeah. Yes, Fallon. This one is repeated twice, so it counts for two. This is a doozy. Yes? Oh, there. We'll call um, complex conjugate theorem. Yes. If a polynomial has a complex zero, what does that mean? Real plus imaginary or real minus imaginary. If a polynomial has a complex zero, then 
the complex conjugate, what does that mean? Change the middle sign. Then the complex conjugate is also a zero. That sounds easy, doesn't it? This is a lot of, this is where I messed up when talking about the conjugate equation. And I wrote it wrong to start with. Did they? Yeah. I felt really bad. Why? Did they not get their extra credit No. I know you are. That's why it did not say we have extra credit, man. Pull it up. Pull it up. That would be wonderful. Lovely. Okay. Or, yes. Did you say go back? Yeah, tell me when you're good. These rooms are awful, but I know. Sorry. It's on 72. If that answers your question. I wish I were no. I wish I were a glow worm. A glow worm's never glom. That's not glom, that's glom. Because how can you be grumpy when the sun shines out your bum? Yes, you can. One of my students did that for me many, many years ago, and I liked it, so I'll go up there. All right, you got it now? No, what did you say? Don't say it. That would make me upset. <clears throat> Write a polynomial function. Of minimum degree, which means I don't want it to be any higher degree than what it has to be. Of minimum degree in standard form, what does that mean? If it's a quadratic, it's AX squared plus BX plus C. If it's a polynomial, it just means Davis, it starts with the biggest exponent and works its way down to the constant, right? I want it in standard form. Um, with zeros, negative three, four, and two minus i. We're going to use both of these theorems to do this. We're going to multiply it out, and we'll be done. All semester. <laughs> All right. The first thing is I notice that I have a complex zero. So by the complex zero theorem, I know that not only is 2 minus i a zero, but what else has to be a zero? 2 plus i. Everybody okay there? No, Josiah, why? Oh, okay. Now I'm going to use that kind of... I'm going to use that kind of corollary to the fundamental theorem of algebra that says that if I have zeros, then I also have factors, right? Right, okay, thank you. So give me the factors, the linear factors of this polynomial. That is this one. Are you confused? Yep. Okay, so you know the green one? So x minus oh. 
Isn't that what it said? If k is a factor, I mean, if k is a zero, so let's say this is k, then x minus k is a factor. Go with me? All right, so then the last one is x minus 2 minus i. I've got four zeros, I've got four factors. Is everybody okay? I would keep it like this because we're fixing to multiply it and I'm going to show you why. I would keep it like that for now. Because that theorem says if k is a zero, if anything is a zero, it doesn't matter what it is. If I have a zero, then x minus that zero is a factor. So even though it's a complex number, x minus that whole complex number is a zero. Y'all okay? Now, that's the easy part. You're talking about if like it's... If it was negative, like, like, well, you want to keep these imagine, these complexes in parentheses. So you want to keep them the same and just do minus whatever they are in parentheses. Okay? I'm going to multiply the first two together first. Because we can't multiply more than two at a time. And that's a basic, straightforward FOIL. That's all that is. So everybody in here should be able to do that no problem, right? Okay. X squared. That's exactly right. So I have x squared minus x minus 12. That is my first set of parentheses. Is everybody okay? Now, instead of distributing this negative sign through here, what? He knows. All right, let's multiply this out. I am going to look at these parentheses as one chunk that I'm using. Okay, so watch what happens. X times X is X squared. X, now see this minus sign, so minus, and I'm going to write it instead of doing it. I'm going to write X times 2 minus I. Y'all okay? You'll see why I'm doing it this way in just a second. Okay? It, it, you're exactly right. Things are going to start canceling and it's going to make it easier for me. Now, I'm done with this. Now I am going to take negative 2 plus I and I'm going to multiply through here. So minus, because I got this negative sign, right? X times 2 plus I. I'm looking. Plus, now I'm just going to write these as 2 plus I. Two minus i. Yep. Now, this one is easy. Those are conjugates again. Right? All right, so I've got, let me multiply it out over here to the side. You have to stay neat and in order or it is easy to lose yourself in a problem like this. 4 minus 2i plus 2i minus i squared. The middles cancel. 
negative i squared becomes what? Positive 1 and 4 and positive 1 give me. So all of this just simplifies to 5. Do you see why? Okay. You guess or you do? Are you confused though? Who are you confused? Like from the beginning? So writing the zeros, x minus k. So the foiling. So is it is it making it harder that we're chunking it like that instead? If that makes it harder for you. You might be one that would rather do it the other way, so I'll show you in just a second the other way to do it. But we can make this into a trinomial from both of them and multiply. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second because it might help you. All right, here I've got x squared. This is a negative x that's going to both of these. What? This? This. That's this this last one here multiplied by this last one here. That's the L on my foil. All right, so I've got 2x ix minus 2x. Oops, that was a plus show. Right, because a negative times a negative. This is a negative going through, so that's minus ix. And I still got this plus 5 that sits over here on the end. If you get to this point and you have any i's left, you've done something wrong. That's how I knew. As soon as I wrote that and I saw that other negative ix, I went, mm, and I looked back. I didn't. I messed up on the sign. You shouldn't have any eyes when you finish. So it's just, now remember I got this purple x squared minus x minus 12. This one I've got x squared. Which one? This one? Why did it stay by itself? Uh, because it doesn't have another like term in there anywhere. So all I was doing in that green step was distributing these x's that sat in front of those parentheses. I'm still not in standard form. But yeah. Remember multiplying polynomials in algebra 2? Oh. So negative 2x and negative 2x gives me negative 4x, right? And then I've got what about the x five? Well, oh, I it, those i x's. No, it's still there. It's negative 4x. You have one that's not even this difficult. Right. Black the i over i. The i x. Those whole because see how they're exactly the same but different signs. That's why they went out. They canceled out. All right. Not yet. I haven't finished it. I gave you a brain break in between the two theorems. I am almost done. This is the last thing that I have for you. X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. Minus 4X squared. All right, I'm done with the first term. Mark it out and move on to the next. <clears throat> Minus x to the third. I'm done with this one. Is that how you learn to? Multiply them. You can. Okay. 
combine like terms. But yeah, that's it. That's it for that. So x to the fourth. Let's see, negative four minus. How many squares? Five and four is nine. That polynomial. Ah, thank you. I almost worked through the whole thing. Thank you, Jalen. That's it. Yeah, that's it. The five x, the negative five x. I had 48x instead of 43x. Now, this was a tough one because of all the zeros that it had. Okay. Um, what I was telling Davis, if this confuses you the way we did this part, what you can do when you set up, Davis, I'm doing this for you. What you can do when you set up your zeros, x plus 3 x minus 4, x minus 2 minus i, and x minus 2 plus i. What you can do, if it's easier for you, you can, this is, but instead of foiling with the whole set of parentheses, you could make this x minus 2 plus i, distribute that negative sign through, x minus 2 minus i, and then when you multiply through, you could just do this like we did before. And if that makes more sense for you and that's easier, then you can definitely do it that way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll write it down and I'll explain it one more time. No, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. So what I was saying is, if you don't like multiplying through with this whole chunk, what you can do is write it in three pieces like this. And you know how we multiplied these two together that had three? You can multiply those two together that have three the same way. So you could do x times x is x squared minus 2x minus xi minus 2x plus 4. Is that easier for you? Plus 2i. Mm -hmm. And if that's easier for you to see and understand, by all means, do it that way. It cancels. That becomes plus 1. So it would be x squared uh, minus 4x plus 1, which is the same thing we got before. Yeah. Yep, oh, yep, it's plus 5, sorry. Yeah. You follow the first two into it, yeah. I was just showing you a little bit easier way if you like it better on the second two. Now, on your homework, I want to set up the first couple or help you set up the first couple. The only time you have conjugate zeros is when you have a complex zero. Are imaginary numbers complex numbers? No. So if you have imaginaries, for example, Number five, uh, let me look at number nine. Number nine has zeros two, three, and i. I don't need a negative i there. I don't need a conjugate. It's imaginary, not complex. So it would be x minus two, you tell me. Yep. Those are your three factors. 
I don't need an X plus I because it's not complex. It's imaginary. All right, so number 11 is 5 and 3 plus 2i. So for, for 11, I would have to do, uh, exactly, I would have to also add 3 minus 2i. It's a whole nother, when you have a complex zero, it adds a whole other zero on to 